Welcome to Crafternoon with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library. Hi, I'm Katie with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library. Thanks for joining me for today's Crafternoon. We're going to be making this lovely winter clothespin wreath. And I've wanted to make one of these for a long time, and I didn't realize just how easy it is. I made this one specifically to be a decoration for that odd time after Christmas, but before spring. But you can literally decorate one of these for any occasion, as a gift, for a birthday, for Mardi Gras, for Easter, and that what, that's what makes it so versatile. You ready to get started? Let's go. Here's a look at the winter wreath we're going to be making today. The total time for the project is about an hour and a half, not including the times in between the paint layers that it needs to dry. For the first part of your project, you'll actually be making your clothespin wreath, and then you get to decorate it later. The items you'll need to do this are a wire, metal wreath frame. I used eight inches, but you can use any size that you want. Just know that the larger sizes will take more clothespins. I needed 40 clothespins total for the eight inch frame. I used some sponge brushes and a fan brush to make the final details with the chalk paint. You'll want some paper towels on hand and something to place your stain and paint in. I used a white spray paint for the frame itself. And then for the clothespins, I wanted the final product to look like driftwood. So I used a stain, a base paint in country white, and a chalk paint in white for the final details. The very first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to go ahead and spray paint your wire wreath frame and then set it aside to dry. For the next part of the project, you're gonna wanna stain your clothes pins. I originally started off doing one at a time and then I realized I could take about a handful and put them all in the stain and just kind of go ahead and let them start soaking up some of the color. It doesn't have to be perfect. I basically just ran the brush over them. I tried to get in all the crevices in between the clip and behind the clip and I like to think of it as kind of giving them a bath rather than painting them because you just want it to soak up that nice color. Um, it does get messy, so I wore gloves just to protect my hands, but it's up to you. And this part is probably takes the longest. It took about 20 minutes to get a good soak and stain on all 40 of the clothespins. After I finished coating all the clothespins in a nice thick stain, I just began to rub the stain, any extra off of the clothespins. And I also at this point made sure that they didn't stick together because the stain can get sticky. So I would just make sure that they would each still open and close. And then you just set them aside until you have all 40 clothespins stained and then gently brushed off. I do want to say that about the time I finished staining all of the clothespins, I really began to question my choice. I wasn't sure how the final outcome would turn out because I didn't see that much of a difference in the original clothespin. It ended up being fine and I like the effect, but I wanna make a note that if you use a darker stain, I think it will look more like driftwood. Mine turned out a little bit orange rather than um, the deep brown that I was looking for. So just take that into account when you choose your stain. The next step after you've let your clothespins dry, I think I let mine dry about two hours, is to run your base coat of country white over the clothespins. So there's no real rhyme or reason. I just took my second um, sponge brush and just kind of brushed it on uneven. The grain in some of the clothespins themselves give it a nice texture and I just kind of did a different pattern on each, did the sides as well, and then I just set them aside to dry. These dried much quicker, I would say about 30 minutes for this base coat. 
So your final step with painting the clothespins is to take your fan-shaped paintbrush and just kind of dip it into the chalk paint and randomly go over the clothespins. The fan shape of the paintbrush gives it those nice stroke effects. And I did uh, random on the sides, on the top and back. And this was my favorite part of the painting because I really began to see the driftwood look or the age look come into play here. And the chalk paint dries really, really quickly. I would say it dried in about 20 minutes. And finally, you're ready to clip your clothespins onto your wire wreath rack. And this part goes really, really quickly. I think to do the 40 clothespins, it took about 10 minutes. And the first little ridge you can see as I'm doing it, it clips right onto the first um, circle in the wire wreath. And the little hole, the second part of the clothespin clips on to the second wire ring. And as you near the end, you'll see that it kind of evens itself out. But once you get all of the clips on, if there's any adjustments you need to make, scooch a few over or make a little extra room, you can. And then you end up with this nice effect. And this is the really fun part where you get to decorate your wreath. I literally used things that I had lying around, like a pretty package bow, and I cut some extra pieces from a eucalyptus fake plant that I had. I went outside, it was a beautiful day. I collected some pine cones and a twig of something natural. I had the starched crochet snowflake lying in a closet, and it, I thought it made this perfect centerpiece. And I used some twine to cover the metal clips on the clothespins themselves. So really, just look around, grab what you have. You can go get some stuff if you want to, and just have fun with this. Make it your own expression and creation. And here's about halfway through my process of decorating. I used hot glue to tack down the twine. I'm sure you could use whatever glue you want to. I just wanted the immediate gratification. I did the same with the snowflake. I just tacked it down in points. And then I used the pretty ribbon to hang around it. So this is gonna be where I actually hang my wreath from. Here's a look after I had finished completing the decorations on my winter wreath. Again, I just used hot glue to tack down the pine cones and the clippings. It took a little bit just to arrange them in a way that I thought looked the best. And it was really fun to see how the final product turned out. And here's just a few pictures of ways you might use your winter wreath to decorate. Well, that's it for today's Crafternoon. Join us next time if you want to find out more or see more of our programs, you can go to calcasulibrary.org or check our Facebook page. Bye.